the next topic that we are going to start is stoma okay so stoma is of two types it can be ileostomy or colostomy okay now what is the definition of stoma it is connection of ileum or colon to the abdominal skin okay the ileum or colon uh, the small bowel or the colon is taken out of the abdominal wall and is fixed to the skin so that is a stoma ileum is ileostomy and colon is colostomy okay here you can see in this diagram this is ileostomy this is small bowel okay you can see the mucosal folds here this is colostomy in ileostomy as the content is liquid that is why and there is peristomal excoriation that is why ileostomy is generally made a bit the opening is made a bit protruded away from the skin and whereas in colostomy it can be flat along with the skin okay so ileostomy is generally spigot type why because content is liquid and if uh, there is difficulty in application of the bag along the ileostomy okay so that is why it should be 2-3 uh, cm above from the skin opening or the skin edge so that the bag can be easily applied and the contents are liquid so that they can come inside the bag they should not touch the skin okay so this is regarding ileostomy and this one this diagram is of colostomy now what is the most common indication okay the most common indication is cases of colorectal cancer and chronic ulcerative colitis okay overall most common indication of making a stoma is colorectal cancer okay now what kind of stoma is made in which kind of colorectal cancer so <coughs> just see this diagram this is normal colon and rectum okay suppose if there is a tumor in rectosigmoid region then we have two options either we can make a uh, either we can make a transverse in case if the patient is in obstruction either we can do a transverse colostomy and then uh, once the obstruction is resolved patient is improved then after that we can do a resection and we can close this colostomy then another option is there we can resect this whole segment we can do a colorectal anastomosis and we can make a diversion ileostomy why a diversion ileostomy because there will be uh, no content inside the colon and this will give rest to the anastomosis and even if there is a leakage it will be less serious as compared to the chances of infection and chances of pelvic sepsis is less if we are making a diversion ileostomy so diversion ileostomy in this case is a life saving kind of a procedure okay so th there can be a temporary stoma or there can be a permanent stoma suppose if there is a patient having tumor at the level of rectum lower rectum or uh, tumor that is involving the anal sphincters or there is anal canal tumor and we want to resect that tumor so if we are doing apr abdominal perineal resection in apr we will have to make a permanent colostomy in ulcerative colitis if we are doing total proctocolectomy then we will have to do ileal pouch anal anastomosis but if the patient is having poor anal tone then we can do total proctocolectomy with and ileostomy okay and this and ileostomy will be kind of permanent now this temporary ileostomy or temporary colostomy is required in patients with temporary colostomy is required in patients with obstruction uh, 
of large intestine and temporary ileostomy is uh, is after resection for diversion purposes okay so this is basically a diversion loop ileostomy so if we are doing a total proctocol of to me with il bout anal anastomosis in that case also a divergent ileostomy is generally made if we are doing lar low anterior resection or sigmoid resection and we want to give rest to that anastomosis then also a divergent ileostomy is required okay so this is regarding a temporary ileostomy versus a permanent ileostomy permanent colostomy in acr permanent ileostomy in if the patient is having poor anal tone and we are doing total colectomy or total proctocolectomy okay now what are the locations of ileostomy or colostomy generally we are placing the ileostomy or colostomy at three important locations left iliac fossa is mainly for sigmoid colostomy okay right iliac fossa is you can say sigmoid or descending colostomy right iliac fossa is mainly for ileostomy and right upper quadrant is mainly for uh, transverse colostomy if there is a patient having a stoma in the right iliac fossa on clinical examination even without removing a bag we can get a general idea that this patient will be having ileostomy at this location okay and uh, after removing the bag on the basis of those mucosal pores which i have told you we can be able to examine and identify now what all are the types of stoma so you can see here i made the diagram this is end stoma this is loop stoma and this is double barrel stoma in loop stoma it is generally done to give rest to the distal uh, pathology or the distal anastomosis but still there is some possibility that the content can go to the distal end okay majority 90% or 99% of the content will go through the stoma but still there is some possibility and if we want to remove that possibility also then we can do a double barrel stoma in which we'll have to uh, if the posterior wall is intact and only the anterior wall is open then this is loop loop stoma or loop ileostomy suppose if we are dividing both ends and we are taking both ends separate out so this is kind of a double barrel okay so the like of a double barrel gun so this is double barrel stoma okay now regarding the important questions regarding the complication of the ileostomy colostomy some very important and frequently asked questions what is the most common early complication of ileostomy and what is the overall most common complication of ileostomy as the ileostomy fluid is liquid and there is skin exfoliation around the ileostomy because of that liquid so this is the overall most complex most common complication which is skin exfoliation but if we are asking regarding the early complications then ischemia of the stoma or necrosis of the stoma okay due to twisting of the mesentery or edema there can be ischemia or necrosis which is the most common early complication overall most common is skin exfoliation now in colostomy the most common complication is parastomal hernia okay so the most common complication of colostomy is the parastomal hernia it is seen both in end colostomy as well as loop colostomy so the most common complication of end colostomy is parastomal hernia most common complication of loop colostomy is parastomal this is one point now among the end colostomy and loop colostomy this parastomal hernia is more common in end colostomy okay 
so this parastomal hernia is more common in end colostomy okay and prolapse is more common in loop colostomy okay so this these are the important points that you need to remember prolapse is in more common in loop colostomy and parastomal hernia more common in end colostomy if we are talking only about loop colostomy then also parastomal hernia is more common than prolapse okay now overall if we see what all are the complications early versus late complications of the stoma then retraction and uh, regarding the early complications retraction ischemia necrosis abscess detachment and dermatitis these are the early complications the stoma can retract it can detach from the adjacent skin the sutures can give way there can be dermatitis there can be necrosis or ischemia in fact necrosis is the most common complication of early complication of ileostomy there can be abscess this is early complication whereas the late complications are stenosis prolapse and parastomal hernia and this parastomal hernia is the most common complication of colostomy okay so this is regarding the complications this is regarding stoma 